everyone this is the enlightened one the enlightened one aka god's child aka god's child welcome to my channel welcome to my page man shout out to everyone out there who hit that subscribe button and understand what i'm trying to do with this tupac biggie case okay shout out to everyone out there from the east coast to the west coast to uk even baghdad showed me love baghdad wow Peace and blessings to you guys out there worldwide. I appreciate you showing me love. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to show you guys something because a recent video I put up about Tupac was a Mob Piru member, gangbanger. Now, people don't like the truth, but if you're going to follow Tupac, know the whole story of Tupac see this is the stuff that no one talks about about this side of Tupac okay all right now just because I'm a fan that doesn't mean I don't understand facts just because I'm a fan that doesn't mean I don't understand facts there are many great men who fallen before Tupac Dr. King was a coxman he liked white women. He banged women. Sexual orgies and all that kind of stuff. Samson allegedly was married. He messed with Delilah. Samson had a gift from God. And he pillow talked talk to Delilah and met his demise. Okay? You have to understand some. There are a lot of great men who have fallen, guys. Just because they lost their way doesn't mean they great. They wasn't great. So this is the new I'm not sure mob James interview. If you think I'm lying, get on your internet, get on your phone, get on your tablet, get on your laptop, and look at this right here. I said Tupac was a mob pyro. No one believed me. No one believed me. See somebody tried to hide this side of Tupac, okay? But is you know we still Pac fans. But maybe this will save someone life out there who wanna follow the ghetto Tupac. This may save your life. Cause if you follow the thug life Tupac, you're gonna die or go die in prison. So without further ado Man, let me uh put some out here for you guys. So I just want you guys to watch and listen. You know how I like to do. I like to put it up. What's wrong with this damn? I gotta give me a new lap a laptop, y'all. Suckers. Oh. How was they really getting down? Uh oh 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 oh. Sorry guys. Okay 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 okay. Wait 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 wait. I like to expand a little bit, guys. My bad, my bad. I'm doing too much. All right, so I'm going to skip forward to four minutes and seven seconds. I just got, I want you guys to hear something real quick. Four minutes. Yeah. Give me one second, because I want to prove something. Because see, some guys talk a lot of ish and I want people to hear this for themselves. all right here we go in 1995 Suge helped get Tupac out of prison in exchange for a three record deal with Death Row Records now pay attention guys I met Tupac when, when Suge was Initially trying to get him out of jail, and and it was a good look for Death Row because she passed up a lot of good people, Bow Wow, a lot of people. So when he got Tupac out of jail, Tupac came straight from the airport to the studio and started working. I mean, he was in there rapping, doing his thing. Everything came to him. Food, girls, jewelry, clothes, whatever. Everything came right there to him. When I met him, he seemed cool. When he got more comfortable, should I say, in death row, then 
his demeanor, he changed. When he got more comfortable, his demeanor changed. Mmm. It's kind of like the Star Wars movie when the young Obi Kenobi and the young Dark Vader. Some people just love the darkness, guys. And it happened to most of us. You know, th there's always that that alter ego, that dark side that overtakes. It's it, like the story of two wolves. There's a good wolf in you and there's a bad wolf in you. Which wolf are you going to feed? Let's continue. Pac is liking the environment. To some he totally wasn't. But he was in front of my power room. And he, when he started acting like he was from the hood, now we got a problem. But it wasn't a problem because he was bringing money. You know what I'm saying? And this way, everybody failed to realize and, and stop looking at the big picture. Like, in the hood, you got brothers, they got to get jumped in or... They got to be real good. If you saying this dude going to make us fat, okay, he cool. There's no rules. So he came in like that. And once he got there and he started hanging and, and just started seeing how the homies walked, he started walking like that. All of a sudden, he popped up with a mob tattoo. That's something. Is is something everybody just don't See, this is this this is what I try to tell some of my viewers. See, some of my old subscribers know where I be going with my videos of what I do, but it's the new people who hit me up, the new people who never paid attention to my channel, and they got questions and they want to dispute, and that's fine. But here's Mob James said it at his own mouth. He didn't like that. Tupac was a mob pyro. Trayvon made him a mob pyro. Mob James didn't like that. If you listen, guys, you have to pay attention to what he's saying. Y'all don't believe shit what I'm saying, but just listen to him. Just listen. Listen to this guy. Since I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Go get, because they from the hood. Wait a minute. You ain't been here a day. You ain't from the hood. You ain't, you ain't spilled no blood. You ain't. Real quick, Haitian Jack says Tupac was never no gangster. He was a studio nigga. Haitian Jack's quote, he was a studio nigga. He didn't earn that. He didn't earn that. Now, this is how I feel. We got a lot of brothers dead. So, he said he didn't earn that, meaning he was officially in. So all the guys out there, all the girls out there, Pac fans, so blind by facts. He said he didn't earn that. You know, if Tupac was false flagging, they would have beat him down. It was officially he was in when they accepted him and he got that mob pyro tattoo. It didn't stand for money with bitches, mob pyro. saying and then he come in and, and just because you're a rapper you think you can put the mob on you i didn't like it when he came with sugar i asked sure why do we got that on there huh man you know he really you know shit, he, he, he finna be one of us i'm outnumbered now because everybody is liking tupac everybody is liking sugar now everybody is they they got sugar back now everybody is saying okay i ain't got no Mob James appeared to be the only one in Suge Knight click that saw a problem brewing. Ride no more. I ain't got to do this no more. <laughs> so everybody got Suge back. And more, Mob, you tripping. You drinking too much. Mob, you on one. No, I'm not on one. But this is us. He just can't walk in here and be that dude. You know what I'm saying? So everything that was wrong was right for everybody else because he was getting money from these cats. Southside Crips was at the Ma Piru rivals in Compton. Okay, we're going to fast forward this one, y'all. Hold on. We're going to fast forward. So basically, this is about the Southside become associated with Death Row. Okay, th this is about 
Suge Knight mingling with both rivals at death row. But this is not what I want to show you guys. So, let me check my notes real quick. Okay, 1057. 1057. We know the history of that. 9, Okay, let's start from right here. On September the 7th, 1996, Tupac Shakur was shot in Las Vegas while en route to Club Shug's Club 662 after attending a Mike Tyson fight. Here we go. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. If you haven't subscribed, Please do so. We had a uh, function at 662. And uh, with all of this going on with South Sides or whatever, we was hearing that they so-called they said was coming to Vegas. So we had a red alert. Everybody was supposed to, supposed to be ready. Me and the, and the majority of the other guys from the neighborhood was at 662. I was watching the front door and the back. I was out on the parking lot in front of the, in front of the club. I see the Cadillac. That's south side right there. So there's some other police up there. There's police up there. And they took off. They said about maybe five minutes. And they left. When they left, I called out to them and told them that they south side is up here. So we was ready at 662. I don't know what he left for. They, like I said, they said like five minutes. I'm standing right here. They was parked like right where the driveway is. When you go in the driveway to go to the back, they stop right there. But at first, yeah, like as if they was going to come in. So I'm standing right here. I think, uh, I'm not sure if it was Hand Dog or, or, or somebody, but they were standing right here. And I said, that's outside right there. When, when they saw us there, so he probably just like, no, maybe this ain't the right time. This is whoop whoop. They probably seen all the police that was around over there. They drove off. I don't know what was on his mind, but they didn't stay there. After that, I'm, I'm doing my job. So then we get the phone call that Tupac and Shirley just got shot. What? Now, this incident that happened at the MG, at the MGM was not supposed to happen. But they bumped heads with each other. And when they seen each other, the incident happened. Okay, I said, while walking through the MGM studio after the Mike Tyson fight, Tupac, Shug, and the entourage encounter Orlando Anderson. So, guys, please pay attention to what I'm trying to tell you guys. See, everybody got mad at me when I said Tupac was a Mob Pyro banger. He was a Mob Pyro member. See, everybody got mad at me when I said this shit. So, now, say this. And I come with facts and proof. This is straight out of the horse's mouth. Tupac in instigates a fight with Orlando Anderson, backed by Suge. They jumped him. Wait. Uh, Trey said, Trey told them that there you go right there. That little motherfucker go right there. Tupac took it upon himself, which he should have mind his business, like I said, and let the homies handle that. Hmm. You ain't from the hood, so this not your business. But he's trying to prove himself. Hmm. Took off. Hmm. And when he took off, everybody else took off. See, what he don't know, because he was at 662, he didn't take off. The video I show of Frank Alexandra and Suge Knight and Buntry, his late brother, stood there and uh, had Tupac to go steal off on him first. Facts. was the, the, the smallest part of this equation. It, it wasn't about Tupac at first. Tupac made himself the bigger man. When Tupac had 30 cats behind him, when Tupac knew that can't nobody hurt him because he got all these guys, Tupac changed. Tupac was spitting on people. Tupac was bumping into people. His attitude changed totally. Hmm. And this is what led to Tupac demise. Because if Tupac would have mind his business, he had all these other the gangsters that was going to take care of that anyway. If Tupac would have stood on the side and watched 
And if Suge would have said, no, you my money, you ain't finna get in no fight, hmm. get over there. Tupac could be still alive right now today. And you, you know what, guys? And that's all I'm trying to say. If you want to know more, you want to see more details, shout out to Mob James, you know, uh, former Mob Pyro, who lost his brother Buntry which, when he quit. So if you want more video, more footage of this, go log in yourself. Mob James interview is on YouTube. Do it today. Do it today. I want to thank everyone out there for watching. Peace and blessings to you all, and I hate I had to do this to y'all, but I'm trying to save people out there who's trying to be the thug life Pac. The thug, and this is the truth, and that's all I want you guys to see is the truth. It's my pleasure. Peace and blessings to you all. Let's watch each other asses out there. Peace.